to have a few different topics. So today the topic is redefine HR roles in business amid during and after COVID-19. Uh, I know COVID-19, this word has been like, everybody just keep mentioning this word. So, but we want to uh, still bring this up because I think we are still living in it, but we want to be prepared for what's coming next. So that is what this session is all about. Uh, of course, we also have some other activities that we'll be uh, putting in. We will be mixing out different style. And of course, there are another prelude, we call it prelude of a workshop on 25th July. That will be a three hour session uh, hosted by myself, Peter Law, and also uh, Angie. So she's not able to join, but we will make an introduction next round. Okay. okay, so that will be, uh, it's entitled Developing, Developing HR Leaders of the Future. I think we for, I forgot to put a new word. Uh, so here is Developing HR Leaders of Tomorrow. But what we wanted to do is a cohort. Uh, basically, that is to address HR can be more than payroll and admin work. So hence, we put together a group of experienced HR uh, you, you will, sometimes I think you will see Lawrence. Lawrence will be joining us to share about as a resource speaker. So that is something we curated to make this session uh, worthwhile for your time as well. So myself, uh, we have been told in the past that we have not made a proper introduction about ourselves. So uh, today we want to take this opportunity to introduce our own self. So my name is Leo. I founded TradeQuest in 2017. So I, we call ourselves Human Capital Management Organizational Technology. So what, we, what it meant is that we move around in the space of OD, Organizational Development. Our system technology or advice uh, goes around this region. So we have a very clear uh, vision. We want to actually use technology to bridge the gap between employer and employee. And of course, to assist you guys, all the HR rate, HR people, and you know, not only here, but probably in Facebook. So we are also Facebook Live. So uh, any questions can always engage back to us, uh, but we will go through some introduction. And I also want to bring you through what's happening today. So I think this is, you know, probably very, very, maybe some of you may not know this, but uh, we are seeing a lot of challenges of businesses from Virgin, example, for Forever 21, Hertz. I think most of them have very bad news in either filing Chapter 11, closing down. Uh, in terms of Malaysia, you have people like Aspirate. Uh, last week, we just saw Zara is also doing such exercise. So I, I think we have to be embraced for that next impact. Whatever that's happening now, I would say we are only looking at maybe a glimpse of that. What's happening will come actually like a tsunami. It will come more and it will have higher impact. Uh, the other thing probably also on the hotel side, I think a lot of hotels are laying off, cutting off, shutting down. Yeah. Yep. So yep. these are the things, the things that we want to probably look into address. So now back to the most important questions of the day. What do we or HR as a general, as a whole, has been doing, right? So what have we been working on? So we have curated a few, maybe just a few examples. Uh, I know it's not nice, right? Some of them, they say HR has to be, you know, more humanized, uh, more empathetic, uh, and, uh, you know, whatever we are deploying, the strategy, pay card, benefit card, allowance, uh, is not that we, it's not that, I think it's a last resort. If everything that you have exhausted, all options, these are the things that you have to really consider. But uh, the silver lining is government is in the picture very well in maintaining the unemployment rate, in having Panjana economy of uh, various, I believe, if you are a trainer, so you will be on this uh, train and hire program. So these are the things that we want to kind of look into address. But from the perspective of us, why do we want to 
be involved in this. So let me share a little bit why this was conceptualized as uh, moving now. Because we saw there's a very huge gap between HR and company operation. So this is what TrickQuest is, has been always passionate about, uh, helping and empowering the HR circle. Uh, I mean, by uh, many of you all know me as a founder of TrickQuest, but currently I'm also an OD manager for a company called uh, uh, Shed Service. So I also want to experience a little bit your pain uh, because many of our HR fellow friends told us that ah, you are vendors, you don't really know what's our pain. So now I'm in the picture as well. So I'm proud to say that I know your pain. <laughs> I'm working very late, you know, on a daily basis, helping to work on few of the areas. So a little bit about us, how we want to get ourselves in this picture is by organizing this sort of uh, uh, promotional preview and workshop. And later on, we will also share there are a nine months to 12 months program in place, right? So I shall not get into details. So what HR should prepare from now on? What's happening is we see a lot of people are doing a work from home. But after post pandemic, we also see more people are doing a hybrid model, correct? Uh, bear in mind that the post pandemic is not really post. Uh, when you look at the news in US, in China, example, or even Europe, yesterday news, there's a lot of what we call the V, a spike back up. So I think that is something we want to really, really look into. Uh, what HR should embrace coming storm is uh, definitely most employers are choosing a uh, contingent worker, right? They are putting a lot of contractual and that will come out to new definition how HR is going to play an important role. Today, our topic is redefine the HR role. Uh, if you are willing to join us the next following weeks, we call it a redesign HR role. So we want to make it as a continuation series. So today I want to share with you what HR can do more. I call it the four R, rethink, rethink the size, you know, the compensation, the jobs, ensure and sustainability. Reflect, reflect on, you know, what's the crisis, the recovery, what comes next. Uh, what we envision, I shared with Peter earlier, what we envision September and October will be the tsunami that's coming. When moratorium is uh, being lifted up, even though government helped us that much, but uh, there comes a time we need to be independent. And by then you will see the next wave of uh, exercise, either a retrenchment exercise, pay cut exercise, or chapter filing, chapter 11 exercise, all right? And of course, reboot, pivot to dig digital performance management. Remember, we are the voice. HR are the voice of today between employer and employee, both sides. So we want to manage between these both. Uh, last but not least, re-engage on the hybrid workforce model. Okay, so a little bit about us. So TrickCast, we have been recrafting Throughout our, you know, since 2017, we have restarted as a performance management platform. But since then, we have gone into three pillars. So the first pillar, I call it organizational transformation advisory solution. So today, we don't come in as a consultant. We come in as an advisor. We advise on, you know, workplace, culture, business, HR, or we want to also empower HR to be more business acumen. And this is exactly essentially what we do in some organization past clients. So some of the clients, uh, we will help the HR to be more business centric, to talk to their stakeholders, to talk to their, uh, you know, uh, to actually get management buy-in. So that is the first pillar what we do. After that, it's a continuation into looking into people. What sort of people is suitable for, you know, your workplace, Either you want to form a new culture, you want to do a change management, or you are exercising probably layoff example. And uh, who is suitable to be layoff? Who is suitable to stay on? And how do you want to re-engage them and make sure they actually stay on as your talent? That will be the second pillar, trade assessment and talent analysis. So that is more uh, technical a little bit, but also technology. So uh, what we wanted to do is to marry both technicality of HR with technology. That's why we call it BIS HR. And the last but not least is digital HR software. 
uh, when you were came, you all came in earlier, you saw the videos that's being played. So that is some of our solutions of what we do. Any question? If everyone is good, can I have a one or yes from everyone on the chat box? Thank you, May. Thank you, Sulaiman. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Carmen. Okay, so it seems it just stopped there. All right. So for the rest of you, I believe you guys are good. Okay. And for those of you watching on Facebook Live, uh, we want to engage you as much. So please leave a message or leave a comment session and we shall get our team to get back to you on any questions or anything you want to know more. Okay. Uh, so uh, this is also organizational development that we are looking at. I'll, I will not touch too much on this because I think I will leave it to Peter to talk about that. So we have also, for this purpose, we also have formed a Level Up HR community. So for those of you interested to follow through, understand what we are going to do next, what we can offer, how can we get the HR community to help you in your role and to be more business partner, please join our HR community or send us a message, engage with us, talk to us. Uh, I believe previous session, we also mentioned we want to be your responding partner, right? So make full use of us, right? Okay, we are here for you. So without further ado, I want to bring up our next speaker. What's next, right? So our next speaker that has been patiently waiting uh, for me to do some airtime will be Peter Law. So Peter Law, has been a all-timer, all-rounder of HR, uh, I think previously from Massing Group, right? He has been very successful in OD, doing OD, delivering OD, and also talent and L&D. And before Massing, he has been super, super long and experienced in Great Eastern Singapore. I think that part has really gave him a very good exposure. And those are the experience that we want to learn from him. And today is about learning session, so I will not, uh, you know, delay it further. So I'll pass on to Peter. Thank you, Leo, for the kind introduction. <clears throat> All right. I'll stop share to pass you the slide, right? Yeah, yeah. Just give me a minute, let me. Okay, you need to allow me to share. Zooming. I can't share yet. Okay, try now. Okay, hang on. Nope. Oh, Brandon, you can lo load up the, the slide from your end. Okay, you try now. Peter, uh, try now. All right, all right. Okay, cool. Sorry all for the technicality. So give us a few moments. Okay. And can you see the slides? Yep. All right, cool. So really this, this session is to it. I want to keep these sessions as, as conversational as possible so that we can draw your, your wisdom as well. I know each one of us have, uh, have tremendous amount of uh, what is that, uh, the work that we have been doing. So essentially what I wanted to do is I, I wanted to keep this uh, as, 
as conversational and as engaging as possible. So Level Up HR is really, um, uh, is going to, to help you to elevate yourself to the next level. Now, before we can do that, we need to look at redefining what HR role is, you know, from the business angle. It, it's really not about, um, we go and tell ourselves, you know, how good we are and tell our bosses how good we are. But then from the bosses and your partner from the business, uh, they don't see how HR add values to the business. Until we are able to talk business language, we are able to really, you know, uh, add values to the business. Um, we are only what we call in, uh, in, uh, in Malay words, we call it short and dream. Yeah. So, um, I wanted to ask all of you this question. What her child leader can say about themselves? You know, this is really the moment of truth. What have you achieved in the last three months? You know, the three months has gone, you know, I, I, my daughter was ca counting the days, you know, they, uh, daily, daily, there's, I think, I think the MCO has passed 100 days already. So my question is, what have you done in the last 100 days? I think I, I actually literally lost, lost count on exactly how many days I've forgotten already. But because we are getting back to work, we are getting back to, you know, uh, trying to get into the normal life. But the truth is there is no, the, 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 the normal life that we, act, we were uh, having three months ago, it's no longer available at this juncture. Uh, and if you ask me, how, many, how, many, how, how long more do we need to live in a current new normal? I, I can't, I literally, there is no answer for that. You know, no company, no organization, no leaders, no, not, not the leader of the world, no doctors also can tell you that. So I want you to reflect about this. Because the impacts of COVID-19 was so intense that I want to ask, what is the future look like for Hijabu? because it's so uncertain. You know, the road ahead of us, it may be smooth, smooth like what you see in the picture here. But along the journey, you have a thunderstorm, you have a typhoon, you have, you know, many other stuff coming your way. Uh, it's not going to be a rosy journey. Uh, it's not like walking in a park kind of situation anymore. And the landscape is very, very volatile very uncertain, very complex, also very ambiguous because any one of you, if, if I may ask, is VUCA is something that you are experiencing in your office right now? If it is yes, I would like you to just type yes. And let me take a quick look how many of you are having that sort of challenge. Yeah, a few of you say yes. So yes, it's very volatile, very uncertain, very uh, complex and ambiguous. And uh, and the truth is really, um, how have you responded to this situation? And how will you be responding moving forward? Um, life has to go on. You know, if you, if you are not able to achieve certain things in, in, the, in the last three months, um, my, my take is that the past has passed. We need to take a bold step to move forward. And in the HR community like us, we are in, we need to start redefining what HR stands for. And, and that really is to be able to speak the language in the business that we are operating in. Now, this is, you know, the reality of the landscape. Huh? The COVID-19 will wipe out 195 million jobs uh, according to interna international level organizations. I, and the, uh, they say that majority of the losses are coming from Asia Pacific, which, are, which is the place where we are in. And, and bulk of them were likely who come from the sectors like retail, accommodation services, which is, you know, like, you know, Airbnb and things like that. 
and also food service. But there is food service, there is two types of food service. If you are operating in a super, super expensive, you know, high class kind of uh, uh, restaurants, the likelihood that you may not be able to pivot like before. But those who are operating more of the affordable segments in the food service, and with a lot of deliveries and papao taking away, you will probably survive much, much better than the others. So the question here is, what do HR stand for the time like this? I literally, if you ask me, I don't have a full answer for this, but I can actually curate with you as we go. So what have you done and what have you not done? Because Malaysia unemployment is going up and up and up and up. So and as of end of March, we have 610,000 people out of job or jobless. But I, I will take you to the next slide, which is a little more scary, but I hang in there. Is that the Department of uh, Statistics Malaysia stated that at the end of March, we have 610 people un unemployed. My conservative projection, I, I'm just using the word keywords here, is conservative. Unemployment rate is likely to hit between 9 to 11%. Now, I give you that my assumption is because end of March, I have 610,000, right? And uh, two or three days ago, I was with one of the person who has a strong, um, strong connections with the talent corp, with the Ministry of Human Resources, HRDF. They are talking about current at this point in time, the number of unemployment rate is somewhat almost touching about 900,000. But I, my assumption, I'm using a simple assumption, assuming that every month between April, May, all the way until December, we have 100,000 employees being laid off on the monthly basis. And then between this, you know, in 2000, in the 2020, we actually have about 300 to 350,000 new graduates coming into the stream, which means add on to the level force. So if you take 610,000 from March plus 900,000 in the next nine, you know, from April onwards for nine months, we are likely to reach 1.51 people out of job. And um, as the end of March, we have 15.84 million workforce plus the 300,000 graduates coming in is about 16.14 million. So if you take 1.51 divided by 16.14, the, the, the percentage is 9.35% by end of 2020. But this is my conservative one. Now, it, it, Malaysian Institute of uh, Economic Research uh, actually projected that we will hit 2.4 million. Uh, that is actually quite extreme if you ask me. Um, but that may be true as well. So any numbers in between is slightly to be true. Between one and a half to about 2 million is possible. So it's very, very bleak outlook, if you ask me. It's an unprecedented time that we are living in. What HR has to say. So question here is, would there be a second wave coming in in terms of COVID-19 uh, infections? Because if there is a second wave coming in, we are actually haven't get through the storm. We are actually about to face that big, waves coming into your I think in, in our fall. How are we preparing ourselves to get through this? And there is only I, I could only think of one, maybe two ways to do it. One of the way is we have to really talk to the business people, partner with business and see how we can work out this. Like what Leo earlier says that, you know, a lot of, um, a lot of um, more flexible workforce that, you know, coming in, it could be on the, on the fixed contract terms that is all coming in your way. Is that, is that a way that we should be operating, uh, you know, um, a new normal? I don't know, but it's really business call here. It's really not about just HR, you know, doing things that, you know, typically, you know, we do our usual, usual stuff like in the past so i want to 
I want to take a quick um, check or pause check on what are the challenges that you are facing at this point in time? So there is four questions here. The first question is, how would you define your role in your current HR? Yeah, you can choose all, you can choose one, you can choose two, depending where you are. Um, what is your current burning on the desk, on your desk every day of your, your role, you know? What do you think? Great HR should equip with uh, this is this one uh, pragmatic. Hmm. Okay, we <clears throat> we still have a couple of you haven't finished responding, so we just give a few more. If you you know have a moment, yeah. Okay, someone. Um, one, two. Okay. Um, I think I think we can wrap up already. So now you can see uh, most of you are in uh, multiple roles. Um. Adapting to the new normal are uh, everybody's uh, issue, cost cutting measure, new policies for workforce, planning for upcoming recovery. Looks like you are in all, all segments of the work that you need to do. Change management and transformation. Okay, cool. Everybody in that mod, um, and then effective communication and persuasion skills. I suppose to persuade people to uh, take up the 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 offer from the company and things like that okay i like this one business focus or business acumen you know this is very very key okay most of you are in the more than five years in a HR job okay very good so let's um let's move on all right, thank you very much for that. You know, the challenges that you face, I can feel, I can understand where you are coming from. It is not easy. It is um, it's a turbulent time like this that required tough people like you. And uh, since most of you have been with the with HR role for more than five years, I would imagine that the expectations on, on, you know, from you will be uh, pushing up to the higher level. Now, let's just move on to the next couple of uh, so how do you respond to the health crisis, oil crisis and economy? You know, how does this impact you as a person? I'm just trying to contextualize it a little bit more. What is your plan right now? Do you have a plan that you want to upskill yourself? Do you have a plan that you want to you know, um, leave your job? Maybe, maybe you know, hey, you know, it's, it's too, too difficult. You know, hey, job, you know, we've got to deal with so much of this. You know, and my boss is not supporting me. You know, am I going to leave the job and things like that? Or I want to stay put because I, I, I see the values that I'm impacting, you know, I'm bringing into the conversations to the business and things like that. Or what can I do? You know, some, some, some I, I've heard and I've spoken some of, to some of the HR, HR leaders. They literally uh, somewhat are lost. And uh, it's, uh, it's quite sad that uh, the situation like that is keep happening. Now, um, I'm also um, quickly just uh, share with this. 
what is in your mind now? You know, are you going to just follow what your, your boss says and secure your job, you know, so that you know, the boss don't do any, 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 any nasty things to you? So in other words, you know, you just, um, just conquer. It's like, yes, but boss said anything, you just say, okay, because I, I'm worried. I, I, I also uh, scared about losing my job and things like that. So, so you secure a job, do what the boss says. And if that, sometimes it become too, uh, too unbearable that you are required to do things that is not aligned with the values that you have been always advocated in, uh, in, in, a, in a role of patron. So think about those kind of uh, things. Um, what are the skills do we need to help the organizations? So maybe, maybe I will pause for a moment here and I would like to invite um, uh, one or two of you to speak up and share in your, your own perspective. And later, I will also invite uh, Lawrence to give his input as well. What are the skills that you think it would be needed in time like this to help your organizations? So probably maybe you guys can just type on the chat group. Okay, Sulaiman say need to be agile and act fast. Okay, sometimes you add too fast, huh? bosses change their mind, you know. <laughs> I know, I know, I know one of the HR friends of mine, he add too fast because the boss gave him the instruction. So he prepared the letter and he tell people, you know, you want to, you want to uh, do the pay cut and, and the boss decided, uh, overnight decided to change his mind and say, no, 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 we are not going to do the pay cut. And he said, is this HR direction now or is the boss direction now? So the HR was stuck in between. All right. So cool. What else? Let's see what else. What are the others? Others. Uh, flexible and accept change. Okay. Yeah. Flexible, agile. Yeah. Very important. Accept change. Accept change in 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 the sense that you know it, it, it depends what you mean by accept change. Um. Sometimes change is a boss instituted. What I sometimes is the environment instituted. So you need to be mindful. If it is something that your boss instituted certain change is that change that are going to impact you impact your profession as a HR person so be mindful of some of the changes that you are trying to do because at the end of the day all of us are you know human beings we do not we we, we try as much as possible not to not to impact people too severely the truth is no HR people come to work every single day you know? One thing to think of, uh, you know, laying off people. You know, I, I, I spoke in one of the forum that was uh, what, uh, went live and watched by about 1,000 or close to 2,000 people. Uh, that was about a month ago. Uh, is lay off the only option. And interestingly, because a lot of them are in the business leaders or CEOs and a whole, you know, in, the, in that. And I was just sharing this, you know, is layoff is the only option. My, my take is sitting from the HR or sitting from the employee angle, layoff is never the first things to do. Never, ne it always is the last, 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 really until the point where as an organization, you can't do without going through that. Then only you institute the layoff. That even layoff, huh? I, in my opinion, uh, it's still better to, you know, take 50% pay cut over a certain period and then we'll see whether the, the, the layoff is still needed or not like that. So those are the things that I always advocate. And, and in, your, in your organizations, you need to be able to have this conversation with your bosses. Now, how do you convince your bosses to... to, to so we talk about agile, we talk about change, we talk about, you know, um, uh, speak your mind. So you need to be able to go to your boss and say, you know, boss, in the last five years, you know, many of you here with uh, HR role for more than five years, in the last five years as a HR practitioner, 
I always go out and hire and bring in people. And these people that bring in, we are able to help the organization to produce the kind of output that we have. And uh, the business has grown because of that. Now, in times of difficult moments like this, I think we should, uh, you know, where possible, shoulder the burdens together. You know, everybody take, take, take some forms of pain, uh, but not, not institute pain in one or two people, severe pain, which means you literally get a layoff, then someone enjoy a better life. So if everybody come together and everybody take some sort of pain in a smaller, smaller amount, we can save some jobs there. Think about it. So that is something that I always advocate. Maybe I would like to invite uh, uh, Lawrence to, to jump in and you know, provide his input. Lawrence, if you, if you are able to. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, cool. <laughs> okay. In this situation, I'm working with Pajaya. You know, in the internet, you probably see that the circulation of our email where it's a pay card, pay leave. I think uh, uh, in, uh, if you look at the HR operation side, operation, I mean the recruitment performance, the traditional role, is that uh, at this time, they are almost become the central because there are a lot of changes. Announcements need to be made and the HR leaders need to consult the CEO and probably negotiate with the CEO on the budgeting, hiring, or even like, like what Peter said, the pay cut. So I should say that uh, some of the company like Bajaya decided to take, um, share the burden, uh, share the burden, not just putting firing some people or not. So everybody shared the burden. And especially you know that in not being able to operate for some months like our gaming sport Toto, <laughs> which just recently opened. And also the hotel where I knew that, you know, is uh, not many few hundreds of rooms are empty. So these are really uh, an issue. But on the, like Peter said, being able to play a effective business partner role. So the issue of sharing the financial pain is what, probably one of the conversation with the CEO. But we also need to be the custodian of, that means that balancing the act, not to cite the company too much that you cut too deep. Uh, uh, but then also you also not to cite the employee too much and employee, you know, feel the pains. So, so that is the main, uh, one of the key is in this uh, period of time. Secondly is the adapting to the situation, how to get the business. Uh, my current role is in the OD where perform management and learning. So we have to quickly to make those onboarding to be virtual. So we use MS, MST, uh, Microsoft Team. So we also do the perform management where we have to roll out the digital perform management to get it online. Uh, we're done from about 80% of the company, but we need to do it, make it digital as well. It went for training, for consulting, for the perform management. So these are the new skills need to pick up. Like I learned the Muawi video shoot, how to, how to actually do uh, editing a video or even uh, mastering the MS and of course Zoom and we're exploring other new areas. So this is the, like the one of the book, uh, Tale of Two Cities. This is the best of time. This is also the worst of time. So it depending how we, how are we uh, able to learn things fast and then also to adapt it fast and to go ahead of the, of the train. So it's good for us all of us sometimes to join Zoom uh, learning session like this or even uh, in from Howard or any other big, uh, major organization, they always talk about how you cope with the post pandemic, you know. It may be remain here for the next one year, we wouldn't know. Okay, with that.
Lawrence, thank you very much for that insightful. You know, um, I know I know a lot of organization when they do this, uh, uh, what is it, a pay cut, la, all those kind of things, uh, they are not so open to, to tell people. But um, in, 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 the, in, the, in the era of technology evolutions and digitalization, uh, a small news become a big news out there. And uh, it's just like, you know, before, before the, the CEO of Pomodala National resigns, yeah. the day before everybody on the, on, on the Malaysian uh, corporate scenes, uh, we have known it already. So things like that become very common. Mm. And and to be honest with you, I even have a lot of hotels uh, send, you know, there is a there is a compiled list of number of hotels, what are the things that they do, which hotel are being closed down, how many people are laying off, what are the percentage of the pay cut and things like that. And this morning, early in the morning, I was just still coaching one of the uh, hotel project leads uh, to um help them to maneuver and, and manage the you know. Uh, the transitions because um, they actually instituted some little, uh, uh, some forms of pay cut um, but uh, there are some individual at the ground are unhappy but by and large it's like 40% um, of the workforce in the organization get a pay cut which means the one who are more senior one and the more junior one they basically still keep the pay running so which is really really good and, and, and this one or two individuals are unhappy. So I, I, I was coaching him how to deal with this kind of situation. So uh, Lawrence's uh, point is very, very key. As a HR, if in the past you have never believed, um, these are the few things. Huh? If you haven't, haven't trust your employee to be able to work from home and deliver their work from home, rethink again. If you have not spoken to your CEO about what business needs and how the HR can, can come in, this is the best opportunity for you to give it and, and, and really show to your CEO you understand the business, you understand the people, and you are bridging in between the two. You need to be adaptive. So if your organization processes has not gone uh, what we call digital, this is the best opportunity. If not, if if you don't do it, then you become a real. I will use the word that so, so no offense if you if you are from that kind of organizations. I will use the word you will become a real dinosaur. You know, dinosaur don't live in this era. So think about that. You know, I I'm using the 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 simplest hints of uh using the word dinosaur. Now, if the digitalization is not coming coming your way, then you need to speak to the, the right people in the organization, like, be it in IT, be it in the operations, hey, be it in certain area. And, and getting some of these processes into the, into the platform or in the online um, so that you can free up some of your time doing more HR advisory consulting kind of role, you know, conversational leadership conversational so you need to switch on this what mindset we call it solution focused mindset because that is very powerful you are bringing solutions to the table for conversation all the time and if you if you still operating in the past then your bosses will start wondering you know what values do you bring to the table for conversations yeah so i'll, I'll just move on to the next one then what sort of knowledge do we need? So knowledge, you know, a lot of people, I, I see a lot of, uh, when you sign up this, uh, a lot of you actually uh, put down, you know, what are your concerns? What are the things that you want to learn? Many, many about, you know, I want to know how to uh, do disciplinary, how to do dismissal, how to do, you know, um, it's a lot to do with non-operational, but very critical, the urgency, you know, and, and, this is an opportunity for you to really take this opportunity to acquire a new knowledge, acquire the new sphere of the HR space that you have always been put aside. Is never mind? I have someone who helped me to do this. But like, for instance, you have never known very well about the labor law. This is an opportunity you really need to get on on the skills about the labor law in and out, so that any employee come to you and challenge you anything, you are able to find the right balance. Not to just pro the company, but right, find the right balance 
and, and share with the employee, if you are going to down into this road, this is your chance to, 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 to get something. But on the, on the flip side of the coin, you are able to advise the employer or your bosses that certain things you should try to avoid doing it because it's actually contravent with the uh, level law practices. Yeah. So knowledge is very important. And also there are so many, so, so, so many um, free online courses that is available. And one of them is actually uh, free. You know, they are quite, they are all Harvard-based uh, programs. Uh, their, their lectures and all those are all from Harvard as well. You know, at least 90% of them are from Harvard. You can actually check out the Center for Asia Leadership, T-A-L, uh, Center for Asia Leadership. I'll type, it, type in later. Um, Center for Asia Leadership, they have, a, um, they have online content that you can actually, they even have a free, uh, uh, what is that, design thinking program there as well, free of charge for now. Um, but I don't know how long they are going to put it there for free uh, because I, I convinced my, my, the founder of the company, uh, the, the Korean and the Canadian to, to give free access to Malaysian music. And uh, he, he was very obliging and say, okay, okay, uh, we will do it for free, not only for Malaysia, but for Asia as well. So there, there, there goes, you know, and, and these are the opportunity for you to acquire new knowledge. There are many, many other programs as well out there. Um, and, and, Grabs as much as possible right now, you know, pivot right after the pandemic, you will become much, much stronger person. Now, all this learning, uh, some of them are e-learning. A lot of you may say that, you know, if e-learning, I'm not very excited, you know. So, of course, you know, if you want the face-to-face -face thing, you know, you want to a, bit, a, a little bit more of um, experiential learning, then it's a little bit different. Uh, we'll talk about that uh, uh, at some point. Now, then comes to this very, very, very bombastic word called competency. What competency do we need? And essentially competency are very much centered around what you are doing. So the first thing is I saw a lot of comments on business acumen and uh, Leo earlier mentioned about the, the, the business acumen and business acumen is really linking between you and the business. If you are not able to have a good understanding on the business, as a HR, we are finding ourselves struggle to actually add value to the business. So first thing is you need to understand the business. If the business is running, let's say a manufacturing, then you need to understand what the manufacturing process looks like. If you are manufacturing a gloves, as an example, this is the best time you have no time to look to do anything else except just basically hire and hire and hire and hire and run and make sure that make sure that people are healthy uh, make sure that they follow the SOP because the manufacturing line is actually running 100% every single day and then you 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 hear me right the 100% running 24 hours by 7 for glove manufacturer will not slow down until until March probably April next year. Because the order that they, they have taken require them to run 24 by seven. The earliest they can deliver all the orders in hand is March next year. It's quite scary, right? So it's a complete contrast from you. Here we are, we are talking about how to, how to probably reduce cost. Over there is how am I going to get more people to actually help me to run the the what is that production line 100% 24 by 7 so think about it so what sort of competency so that's business acumen is one thing the other thing is you know what are the questions that you need to ask you need to be able to ask the right question so you need to also be able to facilitate at the conversation so facilitation skill is very very key in consulting in advisory role so if you want to be, alleviate yourself level up yourself from the HR op operation to the HR uh, facilitation, which sort of like in-house in uh, consultant, you need to start honing the skills of facilitations. And facilitation is not training. A lot of people say a facilitator is a trainer. No, facilitator are operating at a very different level. Now, all this just a bite size that I'm giving, but you need to dive into deeper. Like for instance, we talk about change management. What is change management? It's all about change management, you know. You ask 10%, 10% tell you different definition of change management. So, so you end up very confused. 
how do I acquire that competency to be able to run the change management? You can't change much until you actually understand the business. So change management will only follow later when you start understanding the business. And then question comes to you, how do I understand the business? Is the conversation that you need to create with the business. So if you still have the opportunity to do like, you know, regular lunch with the business leaders, do that, continue to do that ask relevant questions like what are challenges that you are facing in the in, in your production line is really some manufacturing what are the challenges that you face in customer service as center somehow? what are the challenges that you face face in the sales what are the challenges that we face in the finance what are the challenges you face in you know at, at the site construction site as an example what are the ch challenges that you face um, you know when you do the planning of you know the, the logistic or the supply chain if you are in a manufacturing and things like that. So these are the questions. So when you start uh, having this sort of conversation, don't go without anything. Trust me, go with a notebook like this, just start scribble down some of the keywords and you start connecting the dots. That's how you literally build out the competency. I never become a HR person and I will never be a pure HR person. Trust me, although I spend my almost entire life of, uh, of mine in a HR fraternity, but I'm not a typical HR person. I always sit in a HR, uh, business role. I, 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 this, is, this is me. Some people say, are you in a HR? Are you a HR person in the business? Or are you a business person in a HR role? I am a business person in a HR role. So you need to be able to partner with the business to run. So to do that, you need to be in a business. To truly understand what the business challenges and, and what are the what keeps CEO awake at night? You ask this question, what keeps your boss awake at night? Then you'll probably have a lot of answers really. Then you start diving into and really understand what business stands for for you. Yeah. Any input from Leo or or you know anyone? Not for the moment. Anyone so, share? Anyone? I think we can invite Peter Lee. Peter, is he there? Peter Lee from Honeywell, right? <laughs> yeah, we should. Where is Peter? Uh -huh. hey, he's not there. Okay, not there. So. Maybe I respond to it. Like. Yeah, maybe maybe Lawrence, you can put, put input, give 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 a, a a quick overview of you know what the what is your take on uh current situation where some of the competency you know the, from the HR okay, regardless is, of current situation or not, I think most uh all of us need to put ourselves as a CEO. What would the CEO do in this situation? how he expects me to contribute to him. Rather than waiting for the CEO to ask you to do something, you think a step ahead. Uh, my previous role as a HR director is that I always think three steps ahead. Some of the job that I did in the past, I actually deal with uh, Caucasian far away in the States. Uh. So in order to be to convince them either locally or in overseas. I need to think in their position, either they are the CEO of the company or they are the, the operation director in Asia or in Malaysia. Uh, what are the, like Peter said, what are the challenges? What, did the, what are the situation they are in now? What are the critical business issue? So if, if you join, if you can zoom in three key critical ish, business issues your company facing right now, three, just three, you cannot, two also can. In these two, you begin to think, how in these two business issues, one could be marketing, no, sales down, or maybe turnover too slow. Then in your capacity in HR, or learning or OD or performance recruitment, 
what can I, I contribute to the solution of the business? For example, uh, I once have the, I have seen the quality director facing the issue of uh, product rejects of as high as, high as 2%. So this become critical because customer complain. So when I look at the issue they have, I begin to formulate the action learning strategy and then approach the quality director and tell them, look, I know, I know in the strategy, you have 2% of the project reject. Then you, the aim is to reduce to at least 50% of it this year. So I share with her, my department are able to finance and bring a consultant and formulate the, the, the training as well as have a little projects to reduce the project uh, reject. So he agreed and we actually in six months time, we helped her to achieve the project. So that means we think ahead and she was very surprised and that HR can contribute in such a manner. So this is why I mean that find out the critical issue and see what your department can contribute and propose to the leaders and execute. This is what I mean. This will be helping the business in a real sense. Okay. Back to you, Peter. Hey, thanks, thanks. Uh, all right, so we will move. We'll move on. Again, you know, this is another question. What values do I bring to the company? So, in the boss views, uh, it's not in your view. Uh, in your view means, uh, kita sendiri, shop sendiri, like every day. You know, we 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 like to tell ourselves that you know we have done a good job. We bring value to the company. You know, but it's our view. So always see from your boss's view and see, you know, if that is compelling. If not compelling, then you, you know, sometimes you need to go and clarify so that in the eyes of your boss that you are literally a business partner that bring in, you know, really provide strategic uh, conversations. If you are unable to actually formulate the strategic part of the overall company uh, strategy, that's still all right, but at least you bring a strategic conversations to allow the leaders or business leaders start thinking about certain things that are able to bring greater value in terms of maybe in the in terms of saving, you know, maybe it can increase the sale, maybe it, it can improve the productivity of the people, or maybe even um, hiring higher better, retain better, and you know, you know, higher better and retain better itself is it in a nutshell a big saving to the company. So um so I'm, I'm, I'm having this sort of uh, 10 questions that is typically very, very essential that business leaders uh, would like to hear. So my questions to you is, what are the compelling experience do I have to offer to your boss? What are the knowledge do I have? Uh, I have for the role. What differentiate me you know, compared to another person in the company? If you have two persons, you know, similar rank, similar jobs, um, why the other person are always getting the attention from your boss? You will ask yourself, it's not that but the boss look after this person uh, more. But if you are able to add more values to your company, I'm sure the bosses would like to talk to you more as well, calling you into the meeting more. But then you say, hey, I don't want to get into the meeting too often. Then you are not pivoting, you are not getting uh, the, the, the opportunity to uplift yourself to the next level. You know, what are the key achievements that I should amplify to be noticed? You know, seriously ask this question. Your key achievement, you think that you have done a good job, but then a lot of time you have not also told, told the story. So you need to do that from time to time. What leadership skills do I have? What else do I need to want to learn? Now, this the number six and number seven is very, very, very critical one. What do my boss describe me to the CEO? If you are reporting to a HOD, your HOD, what do your boss describe telling, you know, Let's say Lawrence as an example. What is Lawrence boss telling the CEO about Lawrence? What is my team describe me to my HOD? 
So if you have people reporting to you, many of you, you know, five five years working working in a HR, I'm sure you have people reporting to you. What is your these people that report to you tell your HOD or tell the CEO about you? Think about it. So you must have a you know what you, you must have start. HR is becoming a, a, a job uh, that requires to do storytelling. Trainers are supposed to be a storyteller, but I'm also meeting a lot of trainers who are training, reading from the slides, but not storytell. Because storytelling is the nature of human beings. Every one of us can tell a story. Oh no, some of you will probably say, oh, I'm not a storyteller. But think about it. When you are young, we, or when you are, when you uh, you know, if you are you are married with children, when you are little little girl or little boy that you have, uh, ask you a lot of things, you start telling telling the story. That's exactly what human beings are trained to be, and you are a storyteller. Now, number nine is do do my senior management know my presence in the company? Do the senior management team knows your presence? Or not? If you are not, then what do you need to do? I'm not saying you go and take a banner and say, you start promoting yourself, you know? Yeah. So seriously, you got to ask yourself, what do the senior management, you know, know where you are, who are you, you know, what are the things that you do? Because sometimes they see you, but they don't know what, they, what you do. So it boils down to the last question is, who am I? And who am I? What values do you subscribe? What competency do you have? What skill sets do you have? What values do you bring to the company? Your value system and your values are not necessarily exactly the same. But what do you stand for? All right. So we'll move on. Um, so um, I want to ask this question. What do you define a HR talent? Uh, this is a quick poll. I want you to type in the chat. What do you define a HR talent? Anything, you write anything as, as you wish. There is no wrong or right answer here. Anyone? Job seeker, able to strike a balance between management and employee. Um, Well, PR affairs manager, that is interesting. Hmm. Add values to business. What else? Business partner, okay, expected. Okay, so um, all, all good. And uh, I'm happy to share with you this. Uh, in a HR, I, I, I coined it myself. I say I, I want a 3A person. Someone in the HR fraternity should be able to have this aspiration, ability, and alignment. Now, question here is, do you, are you a 3A talent for the HR? How many A's do you possess if you have Ability, you have an aspiration, but no alignment with the company, then you might want to relook at the alignment part. Um, if there is no way that you could align to the organizations that you are working for right now, in terms of you know, alignment, a lot of time, it's the biggest hindrance is actually our value system and the boss's value system are con contracted thing. Then it's difficult to do alignment. So when that is difficult, then you need to make a choice. Yeah. And the, the here the, the 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 important part is which of the A is missing is the ability part is missing the ability part means your knowledge and your skills your competency that is easily to be acquired 
But the most dangerous one, if you don't have, is the aspiration. If you don't have aspiration, then no matter what you have in terms of ability, it may take may not take you far. Because you don't have an aspiration, you know, it's like you don't envision yourself to be a manager, but you are just uh, a system manager, let's say. You don't have the ambition. Uh, do, do, want, uh, do not aspire to, um, to be the head of HR. Do not want to be a manager. You don't want to manage people. You know, it's too difficult. You know, the bosses, to become a bosses, you become very difficult and things like that. So there is no aspiration. So if you don't have an aspiration, you may not take you very far. You will get stuck, uh, stuck in where you are right now for a fair long time, I believe, unless you decided to make a journey. So these are some of the conversation that you need to go. Uh, is the three A is the only thing that you need to use that model for? No, there are many, many other ones. So I will give you uh, another one, just a quick sample. Uh, um, fortunately, it also looks similar. Uh, it's a critical dimension of talent. So that we talk about ability, we talk about aspiration, we talk about engagement. So you can see there are, you know, this is talking about the high potential people where the ability is talking about a cognitive as well, you know, propensity to lead, you know, that. Then you talk about motivation and career aspiration, recognition, the prestige part. And then the last part is really, where are you, you know, in alignment with the corporate culture and the values and the commitment to the organization. So these are, these are some of the, so the uh, we, talk, we call it, High potential talents. Okay, um, I understand Brandon want to do a breakout, breakout sessions. Yeah, um, and want to do a breakout session. Okay, uh, Brandon, you can go ahead to do that. Uh, all right. Uh, hi everyone. My name is Brandon. I'm actually part of the team. Thank you so much. Uh, our coach, Mr. Peter, has given us so much thoughts on that, and I believe Leo is actually uh. Uh, on the site as well. So Leo and I and Zemin will facilitate on the next session, which is a much, much more exciting moment where I believe this is where, uh, that's the moment where we would like everyone to join in the conversation, to share about any concerns or any challenges or any things that you would like to share to us. So in these breakout rooms, we have three questions that we can, we have around 12 minutes time so that we can actually uh, discuss on these three questions among all the HR leaders in the breakout room. So feel free to voice out all the things that you would love to voice out and let's have a brainstorm session on it. Either it can be ideations or implementations or even just concerns so that we can get each other's uh, inputs into it and let's make an impact on it. So uh, are you guys ready? If you are ready, type one. Please type one in the conversation itself. If you are ready, please type one and Let's uh let's start the breakup room in uh, uh one minute time, right? So uh, Zemi right. it's just a screenshot this uh question that will facilitate on your breakout room discussion. Right, great. So uh, uh we have a screenshot or you, you can you can feel free to screenshot or take a picture and let's uh have uh the breakout rooms in I think the few 30 minutes, uh sorry, 30 seconds time. Zemi, are you ready? All right, so uh, we are going to go to the breakout room now. So everyone, please enjoy and share your thoughts, all right?
Okay, the other room hasn't come back. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. <laughs> Brandon, you better go and visit them. <laughs> they are just outside, in fact. Let me just, let me get a check on that in that case. I will wait because the time is tickling, so I ask them to come back now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right, thank you so much, Peter. I have I think I have two or three more slides. Yeah, I, uh, sorry, I think, yeah, everyone, hi, I'm, yeah, I'm back. Uh, I think the uh, Leo's room will require 30 more seconds, uh, around one minute, 30 more seconds to one minute time because uh, they were having some, I, I heard, overheard the conversation also, the challenges in new normal itself. And then they were mentioning like, um, how can I assign people back to the, rec, the like, like what TK has mentioned, uh, assign the right numbers back to the office and what will be the priority? So I think that, oh yeah, everyone's actually back. One minute, calm down. All right. Great. Uh, yes, we have everyone back in the main room now. So uh, thank you so much for all everyone for the sharings. And hopefully we believe that uh, when we are doing these kind of conversations and inside sharings, we may learn from each others and let's have much more discussion after that. So now I would love to pass the stage to Leo again to do the summary and also to, for, to Peter as well to do the summary for of the day itself. So, um, Leo, maybe maybe allow me to have, uh, I think, three more slides. Mm -hmm. Let me just quickly take that through and then uh, and uh, we wrap up. Okay, earlier we talked about this, um, uh, what we call the critical dimension of talent. So, you know, um, you, you can actually get this information easily. So earlier I, I talked about this uh, career orientation. Uh, what is that? Who am I? You know, you need to understand your career orientation. You need to know what are the, you know, why HR job? Why are you in a HR job? Because the truth is HR job is actually very exciting, very sexy. And, and, and you'll be surprised that, you know, in fact, HR, HR job uh, in Malaysia, HR is one of the top paying C-suites um, uh, in the corporate Malaysia, uh, if I mean, I'll, I'll just say it as it is. Huh? Um, some of the top HR job huh, in Malaysia are paid as much as seven eight hundred thousand annually. Um, so the, the traditional four quadrant of HR recruitment, rewards, learning and talent, and then engagement and IIER kind of thing. Uh, you need to hone this some of this. And each of these area, actually, they are sub breakdown further. You know, we 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 are, I will share with you a little bit shortly. And also, you need to understand, like for instance, recruitment. You need to to start looking at employer branding, uh, especially the you trying to project your company first impression. So, uh, and, and employee experience is actually key critical part of the employer branding. We talk about recruitment acquisitions, uh, talent acquisition assessment center. Assessment center is something a lot of organizations, smaller organizations usually don't do, but this is something very essential so that you can attract, uh, hire the better, better, uh, more, more aligned people, you know. Then performance management, what is your role in the performance management? Are you just facilitating uh, the process or are you part of these conversations? Then, you know, you need to, you know, as a HR person, you need to not only just be able to, uh, facilitate you also need to be able to present well because when you pre, pre put out some some uh, proposal you need to go, go in there and impress and you know otherwise you'll get depressed you know now um some of the areas like re reward and recognition you know re what is your company reward philosophy what are the budgets that your bosses are giving you how are you going to creatively using the same amount of money or same budget they given but perception of the employee experience is different 
So you are able to dis uh, distinguish that easily with that by doing a few things. And learning and development, core skill, future skills, and, and accelerations. What are the things that you need to do? What are the future skills that your organization needs? Because not every organization require the same future skills. So you need to you need to be able to do, do that. Uh, talent management, define what is talent management to your, to your organization. Assess them, validate them, and review on a, on a regular basis. Regular as to six months at the most, uh, every, uh, no, once every six months, or if your organization is smaller, then you may maybe review it on an annual basis. Employee engagement, how to create a culture that thrives and people are feeling that it, uh, not each one of the people are friendly. In, in industrial relationship and employee relations. Uh, what what are we doing as a HR? Are we just a, a pool of people get together and comply to the regulations, or are we building strong bonds with the union? You know, sometimes you know some of the HR people that I, I spoke to are uh, they are so they are so against the union. But union, if you deal with them, I used to have four unions in my organization. I work with them. Uh, union are always behind us. We were the first company in that industry or insurance company that has this what we call performance wage link. Wages. We are the first in the industry, and we manage to do it. And every every other uh, company in the industry is asking, how did you do that? So we need to work with the union. Uh, union are part, partner with us. They are not our enemies. Uh, leadership brand. What is your brand? You got to ask yourself. And finally, you know, HR as a facilitator. You know, business acumen and business partner are something that you cannot detach yourself. So once you are able to hone these skills, you know. I want I want to really you know know also what are the what are the some of the uh, skills that you are keen to learn as well from the you know as part of the uh, level up and us upskilling as well. So I want to just take uh, I know twenty seconds or thirty seconds for you to really type up one or two of the things that you wanted to to learn in the chat box right now. Then we will summarize it into the next two slides. Okay, in essence of time, so I will quickly wrap up. So these are some of the things that I put down, you know, in a, in a 12 different topics or topical and learning the future of HR. It's really talking about core competency, career path, future HR, acquisition assessment center. So something that I have actually talked about, but there are a little bit more one. You, you look at number eight, HR technology. What are the HR technology needed? What you need to be able to adapt to the technology that is used in a HR fraternity. And also, what are the, some of the analytics that you are doing? HR leader as an internal OD consultant, are you prepared for that? HR leadership branding, you know, you talk about your image, you talk about social, social intelligence that you have, uh, strategic business partner, and also the communicator. And last but not least, I always, always say that HR leader are a winning facilitator and also a storyteller. So you need to start figuring out how to be that. So, these are some of the things that we thought it will be able to help people to scale up quickly. So um, I, I'll leave this to uh, uh, Brandon to, to do the last part of the poll. Yeah, Brandon, over to you. So I'm unmuted. <laughs> so thank you so much for, for, the, for the sharing, Spito. So the last part, in fact, what we are trying to say is that uh, we would love to run these continuous programs uh, in a continuous way so that everyone can have a mutual learning. So this is why Spito has mentioned on the last part of it, uh, would, you, would, you, would you want to learn about uh, OD learnings and OD sessions and even what is the future learnings of HRs can be done? Uh, in, in a week time, maybe would you like to spend 30 minutes time per week, 60 minutes time per week, or 90 minutes time per week itself to have this kind of engagement to learn with us. So that will lead, to, lead up to the summary of the day where uh, Leo, I think you uh, we have a post to see whether uh, would you like to commit or maybe I would love to use the word, would you like to be part of the committee itself to learn about how to level up yourself in transformations and what will be the frequency? So because of this itself, that, that will allow us to create much more engagement values and much more different kind of sessions. Uh, maybe we will even consider to, be, to do it on the weekdays or the weekends itself. So by helping us to answer all these questions on the poll itself, it allows us to know how can we create or coordinate these uh, facilitation sessions for OD learnings 
HR future learnings and learning outcomes much, much more better. So we would love everyone to just spend, uh, I think one minute time, not a lot, uh, to answer these few questions on the poll. Uh, four questions, in fact, yes, four questions in the poll to know how about how to be a next, or we call that our title, how to be a level up HR in that case. So Peter, uh, do we have any things or do we have any add-ons? Uh, I don't think so. I think, <laughs> okay. I think my, my last slide is just my picture only. I, <laughs> so so uh, I always, I, this is my personal quotes. Huh? Leaders of the HR fraternity, I leave it to you to decide. You know, I, I leave you with these quotes. Uh, you know, the cho choices you make today detects the life you live on tomorrow. So make the choice. Okay, great. So, uh, okay, I'm, so while yeah. you are answering, uh, sorry, I just uh, come in just a little bit about next week. So, we try to, you know, like uh, Lawrence mentioned earlier, we try to see if a weekday or a weekend is suitable. So, next week will be at Friday. Uh, 3rd of July, it will be at 11 a.m. Uh, we have gotten Francesca. So uh, she's not able to join us today. So Francesca is the head of human resource for Selangor Dredging Berhad. So she will be our guest speaker. So sometimes we will get a uh, different guest speaker to share different sort of uh, topics or even uh, insights. And then the topic will be entitled... Sorry, because the poll blocked my view. I can't see anything. <laughs> HR role during the uncertainties. Okay, so I got that. So that will be for next week. Sign up early so we can also engage you uh, better. Uh, so this whole session is actually to tailored for another program on the 25th July. So if you're interested, always reach out to us to get more info. Uh, there is also a group package. Uh, there is also uh, early bird. Uh, I, I don't think early bird, sorry, group package. And if you have a few person like that, let us know. We can tailor made a better package for you. So what we are trying to focus here is to target uh, these three areas, as you see, called the workshops outcome. Uh, if you guys have finished the poll, so maybe I'll just end the poll because it's blocking my view. Sorry, yeah. Okay, cool. So it's develop your first step HRBP, business HR competency. Uh, accelerate your HR with talent analysis and data analysis. Equipping employer branding into business HR strategies. So it will be a short, not really a short, it will be a three hours or a little bit slightly more, four, three to four hour session where we compact whatever we are doing today, it will be in a more discussion, more group work. So I think when you guys break out, you have some discussion, smaller discussion. So we want more discussion. So it's not a training, uh, which means we are not here to tell you what to do, but we are here to facilitate the, how we can do and level up. So our theme is level up HR. And last but not least, uh, join our level up HR community. So uh, we will be sharing more information, insights, uh, probably some, you know, uh, expert sharing or even uh, experienced HRs that can actually answer some questions as well. So that will be more all from my side. And I'm sharing the poll result to just get a feel. So 571% most of you wanted a shorter period. Uh, I think that is... Uh, then, of course, nine months and only one of you said 12 months. Uh, what would be the frequency of session per month, once a month, uh, once a week, uh, once fortnightly? So fortnightly is every two weeks once. Lah. And uh, how long per session? 60 minutes, 75 minutes and 90 minutes. And uh, which day do you think you can fit into your schedule over the weekend, Saturday after lunch? So yeah, basically because every one of us are here. So I think this is a good day. Uh, oh, actually, there are a few of you mentioned after dinner over the weekend. Any of the weekdays after work 8 p.m. So we will take in note on all these uh, results. So allow us to curate a better timing and also to know when would be good to engage you guys. 
So uh, my side, I'm done. So uh, thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you for all to all of you on Facebook Live who is tuning in to watch. Uh, I'm so sorry we are not able to engage you fully. Feel free to come into the Zoom session. I think that will be even more interactive uh, than if Otherwise, I would like to thank Peter for your time, for sharing the session, Lawrence to join in on a such short notice, and every one of you who contributed to this session, and that keeps us going to make more Level Up HR. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Okay. Bye.